Hi and welcome back to the Elise Cake Textiles podcast. Welcome to our boat. This is our new location for this week. Unfortunately we aren't in our shed because it is too cold but we promise that at some point we will film in the same location <laughs> twice. <laughs> um, thank you for coming back and um, if you haven't already watched our last podcast we did an interview with Ed from the Wool Circle and so that was really interesting to talk with him because he's very passionate about all his sheep um, and we love Ed so please go and watch that. Yeah it's a really really important thing that he's trying to do and so if you can imp um, support that in any way um, whether e even if you can't afford to, to put uh, money towards buying some of the pr uh, the wool by a pre-order um, you can sh share on social media or like their pages and their posts um, any little thing I think will really help won't it and um, later on we'll be doing a little spinning uh, tutorial we got loads of feedback and loads of questions which we're really grateful for aren't we um, everybody was great so supportive but we had some um, questions about spinning and about weaving which were about the basics starting at the very beginning so that's given us a place hasn't it to to start and so we'll do one question from um, spinning for spinners and one for weavers and so the spinning tutorial that we're going to do we're going to use some of the fibre from Ed Sheet which is going to be some white fleece woodland so we'll do a little spinning tutorial later which is going to be great um, like I say thanks very much for um, all your likes and your comments and everything um, it's great and we want that's where we want it to be don't we we want it to be um, a give and take and so what we'd really love at some point is to be able to do a live stream so that we can answer questions as things um, as things come up and we can all join in together so um, although this is lovely or sitting here looking at a camera um, and, and then having your comments if we could have it uh, live that would be absolutely brilliant so shall we have a look at the um, what we did what we've done since the last time we spoke we said I think the last time we said we were going it was the two day weaving mm -hmm. wasn't it yeah and um, and that went went really well yeah didn't it? yeah I'll um I'll add some pictures in from that no it went really well there was some really nice things made and really different actually as well um they all the things that were made were just like the colors and the patterns and everything were just so different and I don't think we've ever seen that before have we like the variety in, in what people made. It was really, really nice and really interesting. Um, and then we also started our eight week course. So we've had, I think three or four mm -hmm. um, Mondays doing that and that's been going really well as well. Yeah, it's been, um, it's it, there has been a very loose framework, hasn't there? Mm -hmm. About how we wanted to do it and what sort of direction we wanted to go in, where we would start with having a look at the fleece and then having a look at some spinning and then maybe and then having uh, and then weaving the yarn that's been made but there's been some little sort of um little diversions on the way so we've done we've ended up doing a bit of dyeing haven't mm -hmm. we um so whatever the ladies asked for we've really tried to to put into the the course mm -hmm. because we want we want them to really love what they're what they're learning and be able and it to be useful mm -hmm. for them so that's yeah been, because they all come in for, for different reasons, mm -hmm. aren't they? So they all have a different objective in mind. Like one of the ladies already has a wheel and um, then another lady brought a fleece with mm -hmm. her, didn't she? And yeah. so there's lots of different things that they want to go down the route of. And so that's been really nice. Yeah, so we are taking bookings now for the next one, which starts on the 13th of March. So we've got some ladies staying from this time and then new people have booked in already. So there is there are places on the afternoon 13th of March on the afternoon but also in the evening so if you're in the sort of Liverpool area um, and you're available 6.30 till 8.30 um, on a Monday evening um, it, we come and join us because uh, it's gone so well we've really enjoyed it mm. and we'd love uh, we'd love to uh, carry on wouldn't we mm. so one of the things that we do talk about in the uh, with the, the two day weaving is we help people to warp up a loom now some people bring their own looms and some people use ours so if it is that because we dye to order or we make sure that the yarn is uh, in colours that we've got colours available that people like to use because we think that's really important don't we mm. 
it's it's important to work with a material that inspires you and so uh, that's why people send us colors or they send us pictures and we will make sure they've got the, the yarn to use now because we use high twist sock yarn uh, which I've got some here um, this is quite it's quite a thin yarn sock yarn but it's really really hard wearing so if you think about when you're weaving and you bring that heddle down and which is called beating the tension that the warp thread is under which is the warp which goes up and down the loom and the friction that is caused when that heddle comes down the yarn needs to be able to withstand that so sock yarn is brilliant for it so some people are last which is the the right yarn to use in the heddle so if I ha have a look at this yarn and I give it a tug it's really quite strong so that's the tug test and you need to be able to make sure if you're using yarn for weaving from your stash or if you picked up some you want to buy some and you need to make sure that it can withstand that pressure then then that's the way to work it out now which yarn to work with which heddle <clears throat> When you buy a brand new loom, you'll get a heddle which is, if it's an Ashford, it'll have 7.5 written on it. If it's a Kromsky uh, or a Schacht, they don't have the numbers, do they, on the, on the heddles. Um, we write them on there so it makes it easier for us. So if you buy a brand new loom, on the, the Ashford it will say 7.5 DPI. The one you get with a Kromsky is an 8 DPI and the DPI stands for dents per inch. If we have a look at this one, which is from 16 inch loom, the DPI, the dents per inch, is how many of these slots and dies are in an inch. That's your, that's your dents per inch. So with an 8 dents per inch or a 7.5 dents per inch, the yarn that is suitable for that really, as a rule of thumb, works out as a, as a DK, a double knitting yarn. Now because we use sock yarn, which is much thinner, than a, than a DK, we use a thinner heddle. So we've got this one here, which is a 10 DPI. So 10 of those slots and eyes in an inch. We've also got this one, which you can see is thinner again, and that is a 12 DPI. So as a rule of thumb, your eight 7.5 dents per inch, that works with a, with a double knit. Your 10 will work with a sock yarn or a a four ply and then the uh, 12 dpi that's kind of like you your lace weight now if you're like me and you're a spinner but you like to just spin for fun and you don't really pay attention or you have a default default sort of drafting method and you spin away and then you go at the end of the day you've got a ball of wool ball of yarn like this and you go i don't really know what um the thickness of the gauge is of this there's a way to work it out so if you're a brand new weaver and you've got a big stash of yarn, the way to work out what yarn is going to suit your heddle is you take, you can have, get a yarn gauge, which is a little uh, piece of, of wood which has an inch carved out of it, or you can use a ruler. And so I have to put my glasses on. My glasses last time, there was reflection, wasn't there? So I was trying, trying not to wear them, but just for this, I'm gonna put them on. So I've got my yarn here and I've got an inch and I'm going to wrap the yarn around an inch so an inch or two, two and a half centimeters now this is just a, a just a sort of gauge really because you might pull tighter with your yarn than I might so it's just to give you a little bit of an idea now that's going to take me to two and a half and if I count how many uh, how many I've got there wrapped around how many threads are wrapped around one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen seventeen wraps per inch so on Ravelry if you see yarn that is um, when they're talking about yarn so say Serdar or or Rowan and they'll say they'll talk about that yarn and in brackets it'll say how many WPI 11 WPI or 14 WPI and that's for spinners and weavers to use as a, a sort of a, a guide as to where how to spin their yarn so I've got 17 WPI or wraps per inch there 
the way we decide which header list is going to going to suit is we half it. So half of seventeen is eight, eight and a half. Five. <laughs> so you'll work with your nearest header to that. So eight point five. That would be actually if you've got um, uh, an, uh, um, a Kronsky loom and you've got an eight DPI header or a ten DPI header, you could go with either, couldn't you? So it's just that would it, it would be the nearest one. For our sock yarn, and our sock yarn wraps around 19 times, if we half that, we'd go with a 10. That would be the nearest to 10 DPI heddle. So if you've got something like that, which is 17, then if you want a tighter weave, you would go with the, the 10 DPI heddle. And if you want a looser weave, you would go with the 8 DPI. So it's like knitting needles. If you use a bigger knitting needle, you'll get a with a certain yarn, you'll get a looser gauge, and um, and if you go with a smaller needle, then you'll get a tighter a tighter gauge. So that's just a little introduction. You'll hear it talked about a set, and we'll go into that a little bit more in in a little bit more detail in future. But if you are a complete beginner and you are wondering which yarn to use, then that's a really good a really good method. To, uh, to use working out your wraps per inch but as a as a rule of thumb 8 dpi that's your that's your double knit uh, 10 BP dpi that's your that's your uh, four ply mm -hmm. so and that's that's what yeah. works for us doesn't it yeah and once once that's in your warp you can do whatever you want in your weft which is good because um, you've got the strength there and so you know in our in our classes sometimes we've had people bring um one lady brought parts of a wedding dress with her and you know ribbon and sari silk and, and we were also were involved with the textile biennial and um and we the, we all made a banner didn't we and there was twigs woven in there and and so you can put anything in your weft as long as your warp has got that strength there in fact we did see local to us there is a cafe and um it's a really really cool place and they've got weaving uh, woven pieces on their wall and one of the ladies who'd who'd woven it and I think I'll see if I can remember what her name is a Liverpool weaver and I'll add <coughs> it in the description anyway she'd put in hers which was only I would say maybe um an eight inch only only about that that width beautiful piece of uh, weaving but she'd woven all the way down uh, pieces of lavender which I thought was lovely because mm -hmm. obviously as it dries it would still it would still smell nice so things like that, you, you could let mm. your imagination really go wild with that. So you, you weft anything, yeah. anything in there at all. Um, we also just wanted to show you our brand new naturally dyed yarns that we've had done. One of our friends has um, done some collections for us, which is very exciting. So we've got some here to show you. Um, we've had I think is it one or two ladies mm -hmm. use them so far so they're really really new um on our courses so these are going to be used as an alternative to our acid dyed yarns um and as you can see like the colors yeah. are just as good um, and so she's also been able to do some speckles and some variegated ones um and Look there's how loads bright that's so bright isn't it so they are amazing. These are going to be available on our website. We love doing that. We love yeah. a three. We love a three. Yeah. Working threes. Um, it's gorgeous. So these are available to buy on our website and they're also available on our courses on our Weaver Scarf Workshop and our two day weaving workshop as well to use as an alternative to the acid dyes. With the, there is a slight limitation with these, isn't there? Because with the acid dyes, people do send us in pictures and say, you know, it, of a sunset and say, oh, can you dye these colours? Or they might send a seascape and say, can you dye these colours? Or they'll say dual colours or what have you. And then we just kind of interpret that. Whereas because of the nature of the naturally dyed yarns, we've put them into little sets. So they are on the, on the website and they're named after the shipping forecast. Areas on the shipping forecast, so there's Dog, Dogger and Malin and Shannon and all of those, and uh, so that's that's what you have to work with. So you can pick those two colours, but there's a lot of there else is a lot of choice um, for those. And if there is one you say you you see and you want to put three colours together, 
and but there isn't there isn't there but you want to go oh, well I, I like that one on the left and I like that one. we can do that can't we yeah, we just yeah. we just there is there Slight is those, restrictions. yeah 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 um but we we absolutely love them and so far I mean we can show pictures can't we of the ladies that have used yes. them so far um not of the ladies that have used them so far of the scarves <laughs> that the ladies who've used them have woven <laughs> so that's what we're going to do yes with that and hopefully um we'll have some more news about that in the future because it's all going going really well mm -hmm. yay so now we've got a little demo of drafting and also how to attach your fiber smoothly so we'll have attaching the fibers smoothly and then how to start drafting consistently and so here you go right okay so i'm using here it's some tops from uh, the wool circle and it is the white face woodland top and i have separated off it was a, a thicker section than that and i've separated just a little strip and i've got on this uh, bobbin i've got some some commercial yarn as a leader so the leader is what ties around the bobbin and comes through on the flyer and we attach our fiber to now this this yarn this fiber sorry is really good because it does have a bit of bite to it if you're a beginner um, something very very sort of smooth and a little bit slippy so say like merino that might be a bit of a challenge for you because it's slippy plant fibers are the same if you're using like banana fiber or soybean fiber something like that or a silk um, that might give you a little bit of a challenge it's not that not wrong to do that but if you are a beginner you might find something um, with a bit of bite a little bit better so white face woodland is great for that and um, Cheviot really good and um, blue face Leicester something like that is uh, is lovely um, we've used sometimes we've on our workshops we've used Gotland something like that a little bit too slippy for beginners so so I've got here I've got some little fibers at the end there now there's two different ways of doing this you can hold the fiber so okay, um, two different ways of doing this so I can hold the leader there and just allow the fibers to sort of jump on and it's almost like they want to do that now because this is a commercial yarn you will need a little bit more twist on that it's much easier to attach to fiber rather than a commercial yarn okay so that's one way of joining on the other way is lay some of those little fibers along the leader there hold it back and then draft forward now because of the glare I'm trying to draft here without my glasses so I hope this is working out okay so once you've attached whichever way you want to do it we want to have a nice consistent yarn and the thing we find with beginners a lot of the time I mean super panicky the whole time calm we try and say calm down try not to overthink it what you want is to be watching in between your hands not here and then you can you're in control of how you're drafting so what I'm doing is I'm doing a short forward draft there I'm gonna have to put my glasses on because I can't see right okay so I've got my fiber there and I'm just drafting out from the top of the fiber the same amount each time and I'm doing a tiny amount really it's just like half an inch just take my time And if you watch in between your hands and you just draft out the same amount each time, that will sort itself out. You don't even have to think about it. Now because it takes a little bit of concentration to be able to treadle and draft at the same time, that can be a bit of a challenge and you don't want to be treadling really fast. So it's, it's a bit of a knack and it's going to take practice to be able to slow that treadling down to the same 
speed that your hands are drafting. So that's that's what I would say to you. Think of this as a sort of like a triangle really and draft off the top of that triangle and draft pull out the same amount each time and just do little drafts and then you're in control if you are drafting if you are sliding your, your pinch right into the fibers like this and pulling it really far you're going to get that thick and thin effect and that's obviously not what you want so if that's what's happening then you're probably drafting taking your pinch just a little bit too far into your fibres and if you just draft off the top that will help you be more consistent. So what's coming up for us this week? On Saturday we have a beginner spinning workshop at Black Sheep Balls which is an amazing place in culture. If you have never heard of it please look because you will absolutely love it. Um, a big wool shop with a cafe and a workroom in the back and we do a lot of workshops there and we absolutely love everybody who works there we get so well looked after so we're looking after we're looking forward to that um, and then on Monday we've got the next installment of our eight week course so we're doing we've done we've just done plying and then this week we're, we're gonna, gonna we're gonna do we're going to um, do some combing with a big English coma with some mean tines on that on that comb. We're going to do a bit of that, and also with the dyeing, the yarn that we dyed the other week. We're going to show how to spin that yarn in different ways to get different effects with the uh, with the coloured yarn. So up to now, we've been doing we've been spinning with just natural, naturally uh, natural coloured fleece, but now we're going to start spinning with our dyed stuff to create different sort of different effects yeah how to get the best out of your dyed uh, fiber so that's going to be that's going to be really good fun looking forward to that yeah. and um we've also got a private lesson on friday yeah which is here in the boat um so if that's your thing if you're not up for learning in uh, in company then um you know we, we do do private lessons so uh, give us a shout if that's your thing um, but thank you again for coming and uh, joining in with us. Please give us uh, give us your thoughts. If you'd like to do join us for a live stream, then let us know and uh, we can sort something out. Let us know when the best time for you is and if that's the sort of thing that you would like to, to, uh, to join in with. But um, until a fortnight, um, have a great time and we'll catch up with you soon. Bye. Bye.